In our previous video, we looked at registering a payment for a purchase order and then a vendor bill that was generated from that purchase order. Now, it doesn't always work like that in the real world. Sometimes we are out buying items, especially for small businesses. They might go to wholesalers or something and look and find a new product that they want to purchase. And in that case, we don't have a purchase order set up in the system yet. We maybe another employee or someone else needs to create those items in our system, but we still want to register that payment so that we have it on record and we don't forget. So what we can do in that case is create a payment inside of accounting and then apply that payment to the vendor bill once it's created. And we'll go through that example now. So inside of accounting, we'll go to our vendors and we'll look at our vendor payments and we'll create a new vendor payment. Now here I'm going to select our vendor, which is going to be vendor one. We'll just set this to $30 and we're going to send the money and we're just telling the system that we've already did this. We sent the vendor, let's say $30 or maybe we paid with our credit card. In any case, we have a $30 payment that we're registering in the system and we'll just say this is for some products. We have our bank journal, payment method is manual and I'm going to save this and we have our journal entry that is created in a draft state for that payment. Debiting accounts payable and crediting our outstanding payments account. If we need to adjust this for whatever reason, this is in draft mode so we can easily do that. But we'll leave that as the default settings. And remember this, this accounts payable account is pulled directly from our vendor, um, their vendor profile. So I'm going to go back using the breadcrumbs to our draft payment and I'm simply going to confirm this. What that does is create a new payment, post that journal entry, and we can reconcile this payment inside of our bank journal when that statement line comes in. And that might happen before or after we get a chance to create this bill. In either case, I'm going to go to purchasing. And let's say that now I have time to sit down and create that purchase order and create my new products. Here for the simplicity of this demo, I'm just going to select vendor one again and just add an existing product that costs $30, but maybe that was for a new product. Now I can confirm this order, receive those new items in my inventory, and then I'm going to create a bill. For vendor one, I can set my bill date. And we have all of the things that we've already seen. So now what I'm going to do is just simply confirm this. What that does is shows that we have an outstanding debit for this vendor. So we can use this payment that we previously made to mark this as in payment or paid, depending on if we reconciled um, this payment already. Before I do that, I do want to look at um, our partner ledger inside of accounting. So if I go to my partner ledger and look at vendor one here, we can scroll down and we see our payment here for products and we see a debit here for $30 that we can utilize for our vendor payments. So now I'm going to go into my vendor bills again. That's this one's marked as not paid. The one that we just created, as we can see inside of our chatter here, and I'm going to use this outstanding debit to pay for this. So I click on add here and that automatically marks this as in payment, utilizing the payment we are, we have already created. Now, in the case where we reconciled this payment already, this would go from posted or, or just no status at all directly to paid. And that's how we can uh, make sure that we stay on top of our accounting functions, even if we didn't have time to create our purchase order or vendor bill yet in the system.